Mike, can you believe these standings right now? Tampa Bay, first place. Well, I don't think that's much of a surprise. Okay, but 36-20, and 20, okay. Uh, last year at this time, when I looked at the standings about the end of May, uh, they were 33-16. and 16. The year before, they were 24-27. and 27. They're pretty impressive. Right now. Uh, Texas, Oakland, I mean, what's the one that really gets me? San Diego. They were tied for first with L.A. Stunned. We're well, you're, you're stunned, aren't you? Stunned? You pass Memorial Day. It's, it's one of those marking points in a baseball season, Mike. Uh, we're going to talk what surprises you the most so far through the season. Uh, let's get into it. What jumps well, out? What thing, jumps out? One thing uh, is the fact that it looks like a four-team race in the American League East, which I think is going to be the best division. And I think I think Tampa so far has been the best team, and the Yankees probably the second best team in the whole sport, but over yep. the last three weeks or so, the Red Sox have really put something together, and and um, and Toronto is hanging in there. Toronto looks like a pretty good team, so, so yeah. that's, uh, that's a, I mean, you could argue that maybe of the best seven or eight teams in the major leagues, four of them are in one division, which is probably not... Uh, Bud Selig's dream. But, you know, the beginning of the year, there was talk that they were going to split up that division because all the Yankees and Red Sox were just too good for everybody. What the Blue Jays are doing, after they trade their best pitcher away, they're getting great pitching. They yeah. trade Roy Halladay away. Everybody knows that. But they're getting great pitching. They're leading the league in home runs. They had more than 80 home runs in May. They are a very home run oriented offense. And which I'm, I'm glad you brought up the Blue Jays. There's two players, Jose Batista, who never had more than 16 home runs before. He leads the league right now. Well, that's the kind of thing. Yeah. And Vernon Wells. There's a little bit of that. Vernon Wells is a gifted guy. He I, is. He's the, he's the guy. Vernon Wells is the guy in the last couple of years who's always been like, for people who follow baseball <laughs> seriously, who has the worst contract in the major leagues? Well, Vernon, Vernon Wells, Wells was probably would probably be the leader of that, but he is he is a guy who is capable of hitting for a lot of power. They are so they are maybe even too home run oriented. I mean, I'm a big believer in walks and home runs, but I I think they may be a little bit too. And I, I'm not sure this is going to last. But what they're doing right now is pretty impressive. They remind me of the old Milwaukee Brewers and what they did. Uh, Harvey's Wall Bangers. There you, you know? go. Where Wells good. had 15 home runs last year. He has 12 right now. I mean, that's right. what we're talking about. Uh, I mentioned the Padres, the Tampa Bay team, Baltimore Orioles. Okay, 18 right. games, Baltimore. might be further than that. When I was looking, let me double check. You know, they're out of it, dudes. Uh, they're now 19 games out. They were five and a half at the end of May last 19, year. Five and 19 a half. 19 games out, and they have four teams to pass. I'm, I'm not, uh, don't, don't see them making a run. They fire the manager, but I'm thinking it's the GM that put <laughs> a bad third right. baseman in Tejada, and Garrett Atkins was the first baseman. Right there's two problems. And your closer was was the kid that they played at Atlanta last year. Was it Hernando Gonzalez? Well, didn't work out. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're, just, they're just a bad team. I don't think they're quite as bad as they've been. I, you know, the first thing I thought of when they made that managerial change and they made Juan Samuel the... Can you believe manager, that? Does he speak English? Because he uh, barely, barely did when he was a player. I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's but, pretty uh, broken up. You know, the first game under Sam Welly lost 11 to nothing to the Red Sox. So, I, you know, I'm not sure he really lit a fire under the O's, but they're a bad team. They really are. One quick thing. Last year's Cy Young winner in the American League, Zach Greinke, 1-5 in five right now. I'll tell you one that I'm really impressed with, Jimenez with Colorado. Yeah, he's been uh, not only the best pitcher in the major leagues right now, but but – He's had as good a start to this point as you can imagine anybody ever having. I mean, it, phenomenal. It's almost at that Bob Gibson level from 1960. He's given up seven runs in 71 innings. That's impressive. Yeah, and he's got unbelievable stuff. Throws 98 with movement and then has this splitter thing that just drops off the table. I mean, you, it's not, you watch him pitch, and it's not hard to see why he's so successful. Biggest thing, though, is three perfect games. I said three. It's two and a half because the one got messed up, human element. But the way Major League Baseball handled that with the umpire admitting a mistake and showing human there, the way the Detroit Tigers and the way the pitcher, oh, Galarraga, the pitcher handled so it. so great about that. Give him enormous credit. I mean, this... We spend so much time in sports talking about these these milestones and what do they mean and what's the legacy and what's the history and, and here's a guy this was a game and this guy made a mistake and I'm not gonna I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make it better instead of trying to make it worse. I, I was enormously impressed with the way that kid handled that. Even better legacy because of how he did handle it. Absolutely. 